to stay on up here and introduce a great friend and fabulous lady, Jenny Lawson from at the blog S and the blog S.com. We're so excited to have Jenny all the way from Austin, Texas. Can you hear me? I have to pee. I'm a, my guess is you do too. So I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible. But I had a panic attack, and I had to take some drugs, and now everything is in slow motion, and my gums are numb. So <laughs> I'm going to do my very best. Um, my passion is actually breaking the rules, and you'll notice this when I start doing my slides, because there's totally not in every 15 seconds, and I have completely ruined this whole thing. But I'm gonna, we're going to do it anyway. It's going to be fun. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the zombie apocalypse. And I know a lot of you are probably saying, oh my god, zombies, that was so 2007. But cholera was so 1875, and I'm still pretty fucking concerned about it. <laughs> um, and that's why we're going to do a live zombie apocalypse drill. You can stay seated. Um, and you can, you can feel free to tweet this out as it's going on. Uh, personally, I would say don't say that it's a drill. Say that we're actually being attacked by zombies and you just got killed by someone. Um, because I think it would be funnier. Um, and who's going to believe that you, know, some, that you actually killed someone at a conference, right? Uh, nobody. Um, Orson, Will, uh, Orson Welles actually gave me that advice. Um, so a few of you have been pre-selected to die, uh, and I appreciate your, your hard work. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have those people die, reanimate. Um, if you have a zombie at your table and they touch you, you become a zombie too. If you touch somebody else, they become a zombie. Don't, don't attack anybody or actually bite them. You just, just touch them. Everybody else at the table, if you're not a, a zombie, you have imaginary weapons at your disposal. It's up to your imagination. Flamethrowers, chainsaws, um, acid, I don't, whatever you want to do. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see. All the zombies in the audience go ahead and on the count of three one two three die awesome and now one two three reanimate you've got 15 seconds all right awesome the zombies are winning get out the flamethrowers you've got five more seconds <laughs> awesome good job with the lasers and we're done. All right, everybody back, everybody back to their seats. All right. So first, first off, I want to say pretty, pretty good job. How many of you are still alive, by the way? Raise your hand. Nice, nice, good job. All right. If this had been a real zombie apocalypse, you would all be dead right now. Um, but it's not, and this is not even actually a uh, presentation about the zombie apocalypse. It is actually a presentation about the art of being furiously happy and the art of doing ridiculously silly, stupid things. Um, some of you, when we did this zombie apocalypse, some of you probably thought it was awesome and like totally got into it. Some of you thought it was really stupid and you're writing angry things about me on Twitter right now. <laughs> Um, and some of you thought, oh, that might be fun, but I'm just going to sit here in the corner and see what everybody else is going to do. And then as soon as it was over, you were like, oh, I wish I would have killed someone, because that would have been funny on Twitter. Um, so that last group, this talk is for you. In your life, you are going to be tested with tragedies and banal bullshit, and um, assholes are going to try to like destroy you. Um, I'm sorry, it's going to happen. Plus, there's going to be people who like stand up on a stage and curse too much in front of children. Sorry. Um, a couple of years ago, I was bored on Twitter early in the morning, and I sent out this tweet, and it said, um, you know what would be awesome is if all of us just randomly, for no reason whatsoever, just yelled, Wolverines, for some reason in the day, right? And what happened was, people totally did it. And not only did they do it, but they tweeted about it. They were like, oh my god, I totally just yelled Wolverines on the subway. And everybody was like, yeah, Red Dawn, awesome. And somebody else was like, Soylent Green is people. And I was like, that's not, what, that's, what, that's fine. Go, go with it. It ended up becoming a Twitter trend topic. And like thousands of people did it. My husband thought it was the stupidest thing he had ever heard of. Um, and so did lots of people. But guess what? I didn't. I thought it was hysterical. And so did the thousands of people who did it and the thousands of people 
who had a smile because someone said something ridiculous and funny in the middle of a subway. Uh, let's see. In the past couple of years, I have been involved in a lot of ridiculous nonsense. Um, I started a public feud with William Shatner that was covered by MSNBC. We're fine. We're fine now. Um, I started a meme with Will Wheaton in order to destroy bad PR pitches. I left a uh, five-foot metal chicken on the doorstop when my husband refused to let me buy towels. <laughs> Yeah, I apologize for that slide. I smuggled, I smuggled a Cuban alligator dressed as a pirate onto a plane because I thought he needed an adventure. I uh, jumped into the ocean with my daughter wearing evening gowns. I wore a red silk dress barefoot in a cemetery. I've had parties in public bathrooms because I'm too afraid to go to a real party. Um, I've pulled friends into rushing rivers in Mexico and I have jumped into fountains that were illegal to jump into. Uh, some of these things were successful, some were painful, some involved the police, um, but all were moments that made me so incredibly happy and aware of the moment. Uh, some people will say that only fluffy, sheltered people with no real problems can go out and do such silly, ridiculous things, and to those people I say, come say that to my face and I will stab you in the fucking eye. <laughs> And the reason I say that is because if you know me, you know that I have severe anxiety disorder and depression. I've suffered through miscarriages. I have debilitating rheumatoid arthritis. Um, I've dealt with a lot of things and I absolutely deserve to curl up in bed and cover my head and never leave again. But I also absolutely deserve the right to be furiously happy. I also deserve the right to buy a giant stuffed boar head that I named James Garfield um, because he just looks so damn happy. Look at him, right? My husband said um, it was the, the most ridiculous thing I've ever spent money on and he wouldn't let me stop, uh, he wouldn't stop bringing it up so I basically said, fine, I will make up the money and so I decided to sell Christmas cards with James Garfield's face on them. <laughs> And, and they all said stuff like, you know, it's about to get motherfucking festive in here, y'all. Like, it's just, they were ridiculous. I, I ended up selling so much, James Garfield made more that month than I did. And so uh, last month, I decided to give back because I've been very, very lucky. And I know there's a lot of people that are struggling with the economy. So I wrote a post that basically said, if you're having problems um, buying toys for your kids this Christmas and you don't know what to do, um, just leave me a comment, an anonymous comment, that, uh, and the, the first 20 people who say, I really need help, I'll give you a $30 gift certificate. Um, and the first 20 went so quickly, and then the 21st came, and the 22nd, and the 23rd, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll figure this out, we'll find some extra money um, somehow. And all of a sudden, one of my readers said, I'll, I'll do the 21st person. And then another reader said, I'll, do the tw I'll, I'll take care of the 22nd person. These are total strangers. And then somebody else said, I'll do 23 through 25. Um, this went on for days. And in the end, over $43,000 worth of gift cards were given to people to help make sure the kids had a, a, a great Christmas. All total strangers who got nothing out of it. This was not publicized. There were no businesses involved. It was just people helping people. And it came from something silly and stupid and ridiculous. Um, this is why I think it's very important that you always allow yourself, even demand of yourself, that you listen to that inner child who says, be silly, be stupid, learn how to do cartwheels, go stand outside in the grass barefoot, ask a policeman if you can tase someone, um, <laughs> start a game of tag out in the hall, make a mortal enemy of William Shatner, um, the simple things, because it's not just about you. It's about the people around you that you bring a smile to. It's about being furiously happy and indignantly joyous because enthusiastic ridiculousness can change your day and sometimes it can change the day of those around you. And maybe, just maybe, it can change the world. I'm Jenny. Hey!